السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس دس از دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف مایو کارڈیل انفاکشن اینڈ دیز آر آور لرننگ آؤٹ کمس وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ دا ڈیفینیشن آف مایو کارڈیل انفاکشن ایڈیالوجی اٹس ٹائپس اٹس پیتھ آف فزیالوجی مینی کلینیکل مینیفیسٹیشنس کامپلیکیشنس اینڈ ناؤ وی ول ڈسکس واٹ ہیپنس ان انفاکٹیڈ ایریا describe causes of death after acute MI, elaborate uh, stages of uh, recovery after uh, acute MI, discuss diagnostic tools for MI, and discuss uh, treatment options. So these are our uh, uh, learning outcomes. Uh, what happens in infarcted area? Soon after uh, the onset of infarction, uh, uh, collateral blood begins to seep into the infarcted area. and uh, progressive dilation of local blood uh, vessels and uh, as a result of uh, these two effects uh, there is uh, the overfilling uh, of uh, infarcted area with stagnant blood and the muscle fibers use last vestiges of oxygen in the blood causing hemoglobin to become totally deoxygenated so uh, the last uh, amount of uh, oxygen is uh, utilized and uh, there then remain uh, deoxygenated blood and due to uh, this deoxygenated blood the color of infarct becomes bluish brown and the blood vessels appear to be engorged despite lack of blood flow and in later stages uh, the vessel walls uh, become highly permeable thus the fluid leaks and the local muscle uh, tissue becomes edematous so that the cardiac muscle swells so in later stages there is swelling of uh, the cardiac muscles due to leakage of uh, fluid from uh, the vessel walls and finally within a few hours of almost no blood supply and the cardiac muscle cell die so these are uh, the few uh, events that occur after infarct and the subendocardial infarction the subendocardial muscles become infarcted even when there is no evidence of infarction in uh, the outer surface of uh, the muscle and uh, uh what is uh, the reason of uh, subendocardial infarction why it occurs first and uh, because it is uh, the underlying uh, uh, muscle of uh, the heart and um, uh, and there is a difficulty in reaching uh, the blood to that area and when the heart contracts uh, there is pressure on uh, the blood vessels so there is extra difficulty in obtaining uh, adequate blood flow because blood vessels in it are intensely compressed by contraction of heart so it is uh, the internal area and uh, it uh, requires a blood uh, uh, at uh, the last stage firstly outer side of the heart then inner side of the heart so when the infarction occurs so uh, when the infarction occurs the inner side of the heart that is far from the blood supply uh, their infarction occurs on priority basis their infarction occurs firstly so uh, because this area is away from the blood supply and this is on the inner side so the signs of infarction um, can be seen at the subendocardial muscle while there is no infarction no evidence of infarction on the outer surface of the heart and the causes of uh, death after acute mi uh, decreased cardiac output damming of uh, blood pooling of blood in pulmonary vessels causing pulmonary edema fibrillation of the heart and rupture of the heart we will discuss uh, these causes one by one number 1 decreased cardiac output when the heart becomes incapable of uh, uh, contracting with sufficient force due to no or reduced functioning of cardiac muscles and of blood cannot pass to periphery causing cardiac failure and death of peripheral tissues due to ischemia this is called coronary shock cardiogenic shock cardiac shock or low cardiac output failure these are few names because when uh, the heart becomes weak it cannot supply the blood to the periphery and uh, this results in shock and this causes reduced uh, blood supply to vital organs especially kidney acute renal shutdown will occur and uh, to the, when uh, there is a reduced blood supply to brain there is a neurogenic shock there these shocks uh, 
are due to decreased cardiac output and the decreased cardiac output is due to heart failure because of cardiac failure because there is myocardial infarction so the heart can not work properly incapable of contracting and damming of blood in systemic and pulmonary circulation when the heart is not pumping adequate blood forward it begins to pull in systemic and pulmonary circulation uh, in uh, right side in case of right side of the heart there is a systemic uh, pulling and uh, in case of uh, uh, left uh, uh, heart failure or uh, uh, when there is not proper functioning of left side of the heart there is pulmonary edema so uh, both types of edema can occur and uh, this damming causes leakage of blood uh, leakage of fluid leads to peripheral and pulmonary congestion or edema so at both points uh, that is at uh, the periphery uh, in case of right heart uh, failure and uh, in uh, pulmonary uh, edema in case of left heart failure so both can occur when the blood cannot go in forward direction then there is pooling or there is uh, um, damming of blood uh, in uh, the in um, uh, in uh, either uh, systemic circulation or in pulmonary circulation. Fibrillation of the heart. Uh, uh, the, actually, the fibrillation uh, is um, uh, the circus movements of uh, uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, due to irritation of the heart and uh, in uh, this uh, the heart can uh, vibrate at uh, um, at a far greater uh, um, heart uh, rate uh, than normal. So the tendency to develop a fibrillate is more in larger infarcts than a small one. And there are two most likely periods in which it occurs during first 10 minutes after infarct occurs and beginning of one hour or later. It may occur less likely many days after infarct. And the uh, factors for heart to fibrillate, um, uh, these are acute loss of blood, ischemia of muscles, powerful sympathetic reflexes and cardiac muscle weakness. So these are a few causes or few factors which uh, results in uh, uh, the fibrillation, which results in uh, the circus movements. We will uh, discuss uh, uh, in uh, the fourth lecture uh, of uh, cardiac arrhythmias. We have discussed in fourth lecture of cardiac arrhythmias about fibrillation and flutter. So rupture of the infarcted area, after a few days, dead muscle fibers begin to degenerate, heart walls become stretched very thin. So due to these two reasons, uh, due to both of above, dead muscles bulges outward with each heart contraction and this systolic stretch becomes greater and greater, finally the heart ruptures. After rupturing, pericardial cavity becomes filled with blood, leads to cardiac tamponade, compression of heart from outside by fluid. So this is very important that when the dead heart muscles become degenerated and dead and the heart walls become thin and when uh, due to uh, the uh, heart contractions there is systolic stretch becomes greater and greater and finally the heart ruptures and due to rupturing of the heart the uh, the pericardial cavity becomes filled with blood and uh, there is a uh, uh, pressure on the heart from outside by the fluid that is present in the pericardial cavity and this condition is called cardiac tamponade compression of heart from outside by fluid and that fluid is present in the pericardial cavity and this fluid is due to rupturing of the heart so this cardiac tamponade is very important we remember about cardiac tamponade and the stages of recovery from acute mi when area of ischemia is small or no death of cells muscle often becomes non-functional temporarily because of inadequate nutrition and when the area of ischemia is large muscle fibers in the center of the area die rapidly within one hour then extending circumferentially to non-functional area uh, so uh, yeah, the uh, extent of recovery 
depends on uh, the area of ischemia. If the area of ischemia is small, then recovery will occur very soon. And if the area of ischemia is large, uh, then it, it uh, take time. And replacement of dead muscle with the scar tissue, much of non-functional area recovers due to development of uh, collateral vessels supplying outer rim of infarcted area. Uh, and uh, fibrous uh, tissue develops in uh, the infarct as ischemia stimulates uh, fibroblast, thus promotes scar formation. And uh, uh, fibrous tissue has a property of uh, dissolution and uh, contraction, and it grows smaller over a period of uh, a month. So uh, due to two things, that is uh, the development of collaterals and uh, uh, due to ischemia induced fibroblastogenesis and the development of fibrous tissue. So the development of fibrous tissue and collateral vessels uh, will uh, lead to a replacement of dead muscle. Okay. Now we uh, move towards how we can uh, diagnose uh, uh, the myocardial infarction. Uh, so we have uh, serum cardiac markers. Number one is creatinine and uh, creatinine phosphokinase myocardial uh, bound, CKMB, lectin, uh, lactic, uh, uh, lactic dehydrogenase and cardiac specific uh, troponins. These three are uh, the cardiac markers. And then ECG changes, ST segment elevation, T wave inversion, wide deep Q wave. You have uh, seen in uh, the previous slides these uh, ECG changes. And uh, these ECG changes can be also shown here. You can see here ST elevation, ST elevation, then R wave, then the Q wave changes, and then Q wave wider, T wave inversion. ST normalize, T wave inverted, and Q wave persist, while ST and T wave are normal. So with the passage of time, the changes occur which are in front of you, which we have discussed in the previous slides as well. And then the other diagnostic tools are um, magnetic resonance imaging, angiography, positron em uh, emission uh, tomography, uh, a PET scan, and uh, chest x-ray. These are uh, the diagnostic uh, points for uh, MI. And then treatment options, counseling, lifestyle modifications. A wide uh, um, uh, lifestyle modifications include, uh, uh, that is uh, to, uh, that is exercise and dietary control and um, mainly there is uh, uh, the uh, stress uh, uh, relief, relief of stress and exercise uh, are included in lifestyle modifications and uh, uh, then avoid smoking and alcohol intake and then dietary restrictions, especially salt intake. Uh, medically, uh, thrombolytic agents, anticoagulants, antiplatelets, vasodilators like uh, uh, your uh, nitroglycerin, nitrates, vasodilators include nitrates, and uh, then antihypertensive drugs, lipid lowering drugs, which include statin group, lipid lowering drugs, and uh, then uh, uh, surgically percutaneous uh, transluminal uh, coronary uh, angioplasty uh, and uh, coronary artery bypass graft and etherectomy. These three are the surgical changes, surgical uh, treatment options. So counseling, lifestyle modifications, avoid smoking and alcohol intake, dietary restrictions, salt intake especially, uh, medically thrombolytics, uh, anticoagulants, antiplatelets agents, uh, vasodilators, antihypertensives, lipid lowering drugs, surgically percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty and coronary artery bypass graft and etherectomy.
these few are the pictures of percutaneous transluminal coronary uh, angioplasty there is a uh, uh, the implantation of um, balloon and stent and when uh, you can see here in uh, the second picture in this picture the balloon is inflated and when the balloon is uh, uh, inflated there is uh, expansion of stent and when the stunt is expanded, uh, the narrowing or the, uh, of the vessel uh, due to spasm or due to the plaque formation is relieved. There is also a stunt uh, placement. First in first picture, the stunt is closed. And when the balloon is inflated, uh, the stunt is open. This is atherectomy by which uh, you can uh, uh, remove uh, the thrombus and uh, the coronary artery by bypass uh, graft, the major treatment option, cabbage. You can see here there is a bypass from a coronary artery. From, from this coronary artery to here this is uh, the cabbage coronary artery bypass graft and uh, these are uh, the overview of management of acute MI this is very important how you can manage the acute MI pre-hospital management aspirin call uh, uh, to the emergency department and uh, continuous uh, cardiac monitoring consider uh, pre-hospital uh, 12 lead ECG and emergency department treatment intravenous success continuous cardiac monitoring 12 lead ECG aspirin oxygen nitroglycerin morphine heparin heparin as anticoagulant uh, beta blockers as an antihypertensive and then reperfusion uh, strategies primary uh, percutaneous uh, uh, your uh, primary percutaneous uh, coronary intervention versus uh, fibrinolysis for STEMI glycoproteins 2B or 3A 